And we're sort of live. Not really. I'm doing a pre-recorded video, so this is the reason why I'm not talking to a chat, because there is none. Let's get on to it. Welcome to my channel, and we're going to talk about coffee, all right? I've been wanting, I've done a video before about coffee and the negative effects of it, but it's been years. And so now it was time to do an updated version of this, and there's just so much more to talk about. Let me tell you right now. Number one, we are all lied to about coffee. We are lied to. This stuff is such garbage. And whoever says it's great, they're addicted to it. And for those who promote it, they're making cash. There's so many bad things. They trump and literally destroy anything that would be considered a vasodilation or brain cognitive, whatever. I wanted to go, I really want to go in the deep dive on why people who are doing carnivore and keto diets are slamming down the coffee. They're not adapted. Their blood sugar is dysregulated. They have GI issues. They're depressed and they've got so much denial. I can't even start with it. Number one, I don't friggin' drink that nasty ass garbage sludge disgustingness. But most of you guys do. See, I had the wherewithal when I was a kid to be like, I don't like this bitter stuff. Now, let's break it down. I want to go and break it down. I've been writing for my course page. So for those who want to join my course page, you go to stephanieperson.com. There you can get a consultation or you can join the course page where I cover low carb, high fat, which is still starch based, keto omnivore, which is high fat, um, plants and of course the meat and fat, and then animal fat mostly. And then we've got uh, carnivore, high fat to transition you to get your gut fixed and or the histamine down and things of this nature. But let's talk about coffee. Me pull up this stuff I was writing all day for this course page. Now, if you guys want to see that whole uh, lesson that I wrote, you can go to stephanieperson.com and sign up for that course. All right, here we go. There's a bunch of points here I want to go over. Let me just pull up this lovely image of coffee. <laughs> Look at that. Love it. Love that image. Okay. Now, the thing that is so amazing is this idea of this compound called adenosine or adenosine. This is released every day, you guys. You release it. It's a relaxation, calm your ass down, sleepy freaking compound. And what it does is it's released every hour until you go to bed. It starts off with a little whisper and it gets louder and louder as the day continues. Now between three and four o'clock in the afternoon, we have a cortisol and melatonin shift. Cortisol, which is highest in the morning, begins to go down. But then melatonin, which is low in the morning, starts to climb around three or four. But Adenosine is also an app, another compound that helps us get ready for the most amazing part of a catabolic day is the anabolic night. And a lot of you guys are missing the window. Now, adenosine is a hormone that makes you feel calm, like I expressed. It is so awesome. It puts your body into a sympathetic state. Now, before I was always talking about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So, uh, or the parasympathetic to the sympathetic state. So, Coffee puts you into sympathetic, of like, blah, 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 blah. and adenosine puts you into the relaxated state. You guys are sick, your guts are fracked, your hormones are jacked, um, you don't heal well, you don't sleep well, you got headaches, you got this, that, can't lose weight, whatever. Depression, all types of autoimmunity. And so that adenosine is so important when it comes to fixing the, the body and its immune system. Nobody's connecting to the circadian rhythm, getting the freaking vitamin D. No, they're drinking freaking coffee now or caffeinated drinks or just obsessed with their dark, dark chocolate. So, um, like I said, adenosine is a compound that, that it maintains sleep in a general state of arousal when it comes to each hour of the day progressing. Um, and it's secreted actually over a 24 hour day, especially increasing in the evening. So it's building up in the day when you start as, as you're, as you're waking up. And of course, like I said before, as you go to bed, it's reaching its highest point. 
Now with you guys that are having blood sugar issues and uh, cortisol issues, then you guys are too much going that cortisol pathway instead of the whole repair pathway of your body, especially with pregnenolone steel, caffeine is not going to help you. So let's talk more about it. Caffeine matches on to your adenosine receptors. So receptors are like catcher's mitt. They're going to receive things. So instead of, instead of adenosine, that's adenosine, which is piling up throughout the day, getting into the adenosine receptors of that catcher's mitt, now your freaking caffeine is getting in there. Okay. And it's not that the body doesn't, it doesn't stop, stop making adenosine. It's still cranking up every hour. Just, you can't feel it because caffeine is latching on to those receptor sites going into the cell. Right. So that's what ca caffeine does. And it literally hijacks your adenosine receptors. That's not a good idea. Not a good idea. Just one cup of coffee will do this. My one cup of cup of coffee people. And so basically what ends up happening is you when what when, when the caffeine starts to wear down and it's like just going lower and lower and lower now the receptor sites aren't filled with caffeine they the caffeine is going down and now the adenosine that's been swimming in the blood with nowhere to go it literally slams you friggin adenosine receptor sites receptors <coughs> excuse me and now the overwhelming sensation of tired completely destroys and wrecks you this is a problem because it doesn't just affect the the sense of feeling tired it affects your mood it affects your sense of self it affect, affects your sense of homeostasis that whole balance that stuff right there oh no my people oh no see that stuff it literally literally just destroys everything you can think of so when I was like, um, just sort of clicking on some, I was looking at, uh, some images to blow up, but I was like, well, they're all kind of crappy and you know, whatever, whatever. Um, but the reason why you don't hear about this stuff is because, well, you know, people are freaking addicted to this stuff. It's crazy how much that it makes. It is like the second most profitable uh, commodity next to freaking oil. That's the reason why you don't hear about it is because it makes too many ducats. Now let's get back on to what this fracking stuff does to your body that you guys are just completely unaware of. Um, so let me see here. Okay. Whew, Lord have mercy. So, like I said, this can come in the form of caffeinated drinks, your freaking decaffeinated or and caffeine, decaf, caffeinated, your sodas, your dark chocolate, your monster drinks, all of it, your matcha tea, your green tea, get your black tea, get rid of it. Let's continue. Um, so the other things that I want to talk about is my donkeys just if I could show the video of what she's doing right now, you guys would start laughing. But the other things that it does is, so of course we know that caffeine can block the adenosine receptors or actually flood and overtake the adenosine receptors. But the problem is, is that it puts you, it makes you super sleepy, but a lot of you guys are having problems with your blood sugar and your cortisol rhythm. So you guys become hypoglycemic. And as the day progresses, you're tired, right? But you're wired with all this adenosine flooding, especially at night. And your blood sugar, as much as you guys want to sleep, your blood sugar will drop, but it'll slam back up because of hypoglycemia and the blood sugar becoming too low. So the destabilization of your blood sugar because of all that cortisol. Now, you got to remember that when you're having adrenaline crank out of the adrenal glands, you're also having cortisol. That's a, a huge no-no. And too much cortisol in the body can be catabolic. Your body starts to eat itself. You know, uh, saggy skin, aging, wrinkling, the destruction of your skin and collagen. Yes, caffeine and cortisol. Like, let's not even get down to the, like, the freaking diuretic, diuretic effect in you guys 
are dehydrating your skin, but it also the destruction of your collagen plays such a humongous, massive, massive role. So, you know, we have this circadian rhythm that we're already struggling to catch up with. And now we have this thing called a half-life, half-life. So half of this is still left in your body over eight to even 10 hours. And then we've got a quarter life. Yes. And that can last, last up to 12 hours. So you guys are trying to sleep, but you can't, right? Because tyrosine is downregulated. And cortisol is flooding your bloodstream because you have too friggin' much blood sugar. And you're going through gluconeogenesis. Your body cannot heal at night. This stuff is not a joke, people. Okay? They don't tell you this in the pro coffee, like vasodilator. Nonsense. Okay? Um, so it also suppresses melatonin and serotonin and L-tyrosine. Yes making it very, very difficult to sleep and repair at night, especially with blood sugar swings. So then we have the problem with the decrease of ghrelin. Now, ghrelin is a hormone that makes you feel, well, it's the hunger hormone, but it suppresses it. So you're not hungry. And the reason why your body is is uh, uh, messing with the, the, the hunger hormone and decreasing ghrelin is because your body thinks it's running from a lion and you're not going to go have McDonald's and Panda Express when you run in from a lion. So when you have already blood sugar dysregulation and hypoglycemia and you drink a coffee, now the blood sugar becomes even more downregulated. And as time goes by and the caffeine goes down, you go to a half and quarter life and, and adenosine floods the receptors, but you can't sleep because the blood sugar is doing this, right? You either nap or when the night comes, you can't sleep. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. All right. So then you're suppressing hunger and you're not eating every couple of hours. And now your endocrine system and then the body starts going into gluconeogenesis to raise your blood sugar because now your blood sugar is like this and it should be like this. It shouldn't be like this. OK. Um, so this is giving you a false sense of energy. So your body's becoming more catabolic. It's breaking down extra in the day right? We, we, we want to be catabolic in the day, but we don't want to be bam catabolic. No, we don't. My people, we do not want to be like, bam, where we're just super going down. We want to be catabolic like this, not like this. And a lot of you guys are so catabolic and you're wondering why you can't gain muscle. You wonder men why your total testosterone has dropped beyond the xenoestrogens. You're not sleeping. You're not becoming anabolic at night. You're not releasing enough growth hormone. Your blood sugar is completely destabilized. You have um, a thing called glycation starts to happen to the cells and it makes you age faster. All because you keep drinking this freaking coffee every day. I got more. Let me get back to all the stuff I wrote down. I wrote a lot. So, of course, it's jacking up your circadian rhythm because cortisol should go down in the afternoon and starts cranking up, like beyond blue light being affecting your eyes. So having so much cortisol in the system does what? It creates anxiety. Or if you have anxiety, it exacerbates anxiety, makes you jittery, anxious. This is totally slamming your central nervous system. Why would you guys do this to your body? You're already lit from life. You're already lit from toxins. You're already lit from blood sugar dysregulation. Like this donkey is going to town making noise outside. Why would you light your central nervous system even more? You guys work out too hard or too late, or, you know, you're like fighting with kids or parents or, or friends or relationships. Central nervous system is so freaking cranked up or bosses or coworkers. And then you jack it even more up by having coffee in the day or having it in the afternoon or whatever. So when your central nervous system is over cranked up, people start having panic attacks. Panic attacks are very, very anxious. But then we've got the gut. Like I can just keep tying all these things together. So essentially caffeine, right? It does a couple of things. The coffee that you're drinking has a lot of mycotoxins on it. That's mold. So you're going to sit there and just introduce more and more 
mold and and fungus to your freaking gut which proliferates goes into the bloodstream goes all over makes you crave sugar jacks up your thinking makes your brain fog and so people are wondering why they're anxious because of the gut brain connection so your brain is being assaulted on so many levels like adenosine not getting into the adenosine receptors too much caffeine too much cortisol and now we're having dirty ass nasty parasites and micros explode with the caffeine because it's going to stimulate that caffeine make it grow and just go everywhere all over the body ain't nobody talking about that right or the fact that caffeine is going to down regulate your stomach acid which also equates to the friggin gut explosion which makes you all friggin depressed and anxious so it's down regulating your stomach acids because it's so acidic and even that like cappuccinos or your freaking um decaf coffees destroying your gut destroying your gut you can't make this stuff up not to even mention that the the decaf has benzoyl chloride in it which is like cancer causing i mean and still has caffeine like you they still can't strip all, all of it out so um there are so many things it jacks with the, the okay so the gut problem the depression the anxiety the the good the, the freaking um people start to develop um acid reflux and GERD is the worst for this stuff then you have like parasites overgrow fungus overgrow and you guys have leaky gut and you're trying to heal the gut wall and then you get sick you take an antibiotic and now you're even more jacked and you drink more caffeine stimulating more bacterial growth it's like a negative feedback loop you just loop, 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 de loop. Let's keep going on how caffeine's the worst thing in the world. The world. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, so it has a diuretic effect. Wait, now let's get that back to. Okay, so that we've got it's a it's okay it's a vasodilator. But if you guys don't drink it, so here's the thing about the adenosine receptor sites and when it comes to vasoconstriction, like you and anxiety and feel good like you can't feel good on caffeine right you're having everything freaking down regulated the serotonin down regulates the melatonin down regulates the dopamine receptors are freaking over freaking cranked out and so you don't feel you you start to become immune to the caffeine itself but it's still wrecking your body and people are constantly chasing it because they can't feel good they can't work out they can't function without the caffeine it's like a drug but then you'll read a bunch of stuff like no it's great it's got antioxidants but guess what people when you roast the coffee you freaking nuke most of the the antioxidants and not only that you're bringing carcinogens to the coffee to the coffee bean or berry carcinogens where is it it creates uh acrylamide that's carcinogenic high temperatures of toxins create furons also another carcinogen so where's the antioxidant benefit i mean they will just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie okay the gastrointestinal issues it eats at the lining of all the mucus the soft secretory iga mucus lining in your stomach and gi tract all over the place it just freaking it's like putting battery acid on it and you guys are trying to heal your leaking gut i don't understand so of course it has the naturally acidic property and promotes the creation of more acid in the stomach so people can poop on it they're like oh my god you know in the short term my digestion is it feels like it's aiding my digestion until it doesn't right but the consequence so a lot of you guys can't poop without coffee this is masking the real issue you might it also affects the ileocecal valve and sometimes drinking too much coffee keeps that valve open you have freaking diarrhea people can't poop right anymore ain't nobody have solid you know bare, like people are now figuring out how to fix their guts and starting to poop better now but most of y'all people have the worst poop in the world freaking Hershey squirts all freaking day. I know I'm cranked up. I'm so excited about all the stuff I learned. I'm sorry. Um, so by drinking a cup, even a cup a day, it's like building up these acids, which leads to uh, potential, the stomach lining damage. Like I said, it breaks down the mucus lining of your stomach and stimulates the gastrin release. So like it's lowering your stomach, but it's releasing gastrin and it's irritating in all the pipes in your body. 
So it can also keep you from absorbing certain medications. Like some of you guys are on thyroid medication, but you're taking coffee and you can't absorb your thyroid medications. Um, the supplement you guys are trying to take, it messes with that. Like some people are trying to do milk thistle for their, for their, um, uh, and even your little ancestral supplements, this is what this stuff does. Um, and also, what else have you hard time to absorb? Just basic nutrients and food, supplements, medications, all make it difficult to absorb. Um, so it can actually, people think that it makes you have diarrhea, it can actually give you constipation. You can't make this stuff up. It's either giving you loose stool or it's also giving you constipation because of the gastrin throughout the day that it's releasing. And remember that the half to two quarter shelf life. So people start to develop heartburn because it drops their stomach acids, ulcers because they're having already issues with the mucus lining, stomach aches. People have like, these are like, these are hello. People wake up. Um, let me see. <clears throat> So I talked about people with histamine intolerance, with the mold exposure, the parasite explosion, the caffeine speeds this up. People are having histamine reactions to the coffee bean, like, and they're not even realizing it because they're so addicted to it. It's insane that people have a histamine reaction to it. And then it also has anti-nutrients in it, like tannins, which tannins can make it difficult for your body to absorb certain nutrients like iron. Let's keep going. So because of coffee, the adenosine receptors being hijacked by adrenaline, this affects the pathway of your pregnenolone, DHEA, and the production, production of your sexual hormones. So testosterone, estrogen, the three estrogen and progesterone, because if you become too cortisol driven because you're having to, and people are different. Some people just can't get the coffee out of their bloodstream. It just stays there, just completely robbing your sex hormones. And we're wondering why when men have such low testosterone these days, the, the total testosterone, serum testosterone. And women are estrogen dominant. Let's keep going. Um, so I wrote here, down regulates, the, down regulates the healthy bacteria in your gut, duh, and stimulates the bad stuff um to um so it destroys your focus it's like it makes you focus but it can't make you make you laser focused what is that up there it can't it focuses you focuses you but then it doesn't make you laser focus like people who work at jobs they can't work without it but your brain can't get there right the brain chemistry cannot get there to a laser focus because your adenosine, adenosine receptors are hijacked by caffeine. So it overstretches the ability to focus. So it makes you out of focus, even though you feel more lit and more like, blah, blah, blah. let's keep going. Um, we see flesh brain with dopamine. Uh, so without it, you crash. Your brain needs to make more receptors. So essentially, you're crashing, the brain is crashing, the dopamine response is going down. And so you're never feeling good. You're feeling depressed. You're never feeling good. You can't focus. And let's keep going. So you, uh, yeah, I wrote down your true energy gets blocked. So you don't ever really get to access the true, amazing brain chem chemistry hormones um, that your body, your cells would actually naturally do or, or react to the hormones, all the different types of hormones, like the, the serotonin, the, the, dope, the cortisol, the proper cortisol rhythms, your testosterone, you can't actually access these hormones properly or adrenaline um, properly because everything is either over-regulated or too down-regulated. Let's see the adrenal and thyroid connection. Yes. Yeah. So we all know that the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis is, uh, is being affected again by too much cortisol from adrenaline. The adrenal glands will release adrenaline, norepinephrine and cortisol. Cortisol will, the cortisol signaling, it's just putting too much pressure on the adrenal system. This affects the thyroid system and drops thyroid hormone when you have too much caffeine you become too dependent on caffeine but these people won't tell you this 
then you'll go and you'll do your TSH and it'll come back normal, but it's not normal. And you're having these symptoms. You can't lose the weight and you can't focus. You're going through depression. Your skin starts to look unhealthy. I can always see the caffeine skin. That's another thing. There is this, this skin that people have where it's like sort of rashy, bloated, broken blood vessels around the nose. You can't make this stuff up. You cannot make it up. Um, so uh, the, the pregnenolone steel and then the adrenal and the thyroid axis, so T3 is going to drop when there's the presence of too much cortisol in the bloodstream. So remember that eight to quarter life of caffeine will just keep cranking in the body. It's lower than it was earlier, but as the day progresses, you actually need that adenosine and melatonin and not so much cortisol. And so that's what cortisol does. It just breaks down tissue. And remember that it can destabilize your blood sugar and make it like this. So if your blood sugar becomes like insulin resistant and your blood sugar is high, then now you're experiencing um, advanced glycation end product, which is the down regulation of your cells. And that's when people age. So it's a diuretic. It's like literally dehydrating your skin. It's putting stress on the skin because of all this gut issues and the speed up of the microbes in your gut. Um, and it's affecting your thyroid and it speeds up like parasitical infections. I mean, let's keep going. Oh yes, the gut, gut irritation can lead to ulcers, gastritis, diverticulitis, and Crohn's at the transverse colon. Now, you can't make this stuff up because a lot of you guys will have this already, but it'll exacerbate the symptoms. Like some people are like, I never was a coffee drinker before. And then I went through something stressful and I started drinking it. And then they start to have all of these symptoms. But then when you go online and Google it, you'll only see like, it's so amazing. It's a vasodilator and it's an antioxidant. Those are the two major things they talk about, like brain health. But really, it's a brain freaking smasher. It destroys your brain. Don't listen to these people. They're trying to get your coins. So, you know, essentially it's an art artificial alertness. So everything that your body would need to be alert on its own aren't be, uh, being able to function in balance. So the body be begins to glycate and become torn down. That's what we don't want. The problem of poor sleep, blood sugar dysregulation, not enough melatonin in the system, too much cortisol, and you guys cannot repair at night and become anab anabolic. So guys who are trying to get the gains and build mm -hmm. muscle, and they're tired because they just go to the gym, they drink caffeine, and they just destroy their body, right? Because they don't have adenosine going into the receptors. They can't feel tired. It's a false sense of feeling really great. But when the adenosine... Um, floods the receptors, now you feel wrecked, right? Now we have a problem repairing. Now we have a problem with chronic soreness. You wouldn't even equate it to be drinking the monster drinks, the cup of joe, the pre-workouts with caffeine in it. People are like, what, what pre-workout caffeine? What are you talking about, Willis? There's no pre-workout caffeine. There's just mama nature. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> um, so it's like, the artificial state of alertness. So like the neurons in the brain are given too much of a dose of caffeine and not enough adenosine. And so this works like a sprinkler system and this creates the wakefulness that you feel when you're working out. But this is literally at the risk of, of um, the sensitivity of your dopamine receptors, thus making it harder and harder to have enough dopamine to feel okay because of the flood, of, because of the overtake of caffeine. So without caffeine, the brain loses motivation. You cannot make this stuff up. Without caffeine, the brain loses motivation. So you need more, right? But people are like, only oh, I only do one. But you can't sleep at night, right? So you guys are on your phones, you know what I mean? Or you're just like watching TV. And it's, it's more than the circadian rhythm, although caffeine completely destroys your circadian rhythm because you're not getting melatonin cortisol rhythm in the right order according to the day night cycles. And so that means your hormones can't repair your thyroid. You can't raise your T3. You can't seal up the gut wall. You can't deal with your rheumatoid or osteo or arthritis. You can't deal with any of your fibromyalgia or your menstrual cycles. You can't get back your menstrual cycle because your body can't balance because of the flood of too much, um, there's too much uh, caffeine on the receptors 
and not enough of the other reparative hormones like adenosine being able to dock onto its receptors and then your body being able to get into a deeper REM cycle sleep so your body can repair its sexual function. Um, it's just on and on and on and on and on. If you've got skin issues, they're going to become exacerbated, not only by the mycotoxins, but because of the actual content of caffeine. Like, it's crazy how all the stuff that I've been researching. So let's ditch the coffee, my people. It really is nasty, nasty. This is what it is. Okay. That is what coffee does to you. Don't ever listen to these people. They will brainwash you. They will scrub your mind. They'll get you to buy their products and you're left in the dirt trying to wonder why you're aging so poorly. My ass is 55. Okay. I'm 50 freaking. I'm 55. And soon I'll be 56. And so for me, learning about these things that I can literally equate caffeine, I'll connect it all. Caffeine, the quality of food, pregnenolone steel, because you're actually just learning about how the body functions. What vitamins and minerals do you need? Caffeine has tannins in it. It's going to rob your body of vitamins and minerals. You have to really, really be careful. There's a reason why most of you who are coffee supporters at one time tried to quit. Intuitively, we know that we would never give this to our children. You wouldn't give caffeine to a baby. You wouldn't give it to a child based on when you Google it. Oh my God, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Since sliced bread, right? People don't give it to their children. Then why are they drinking it? There is no difference. The damage to the body is damage to the body if it's young or older. When you're having hormones being suppressed or over secreted because of a stimulant, we call that a clue. And I think y'all need to get one who are caffeine addicted. Now, years ago, I was saying, don't drink coffee. I was doing like no coffee, no cheese and no nuts. That was the thing I would say all the time. And people would say how wrong you're so wrong. You're wrong, 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 wrong. Looks like Stephanie's not wrong. All right. If you guys want to stay young and have energy, I am so tired of people saying in my age group, that's why I don't even look at men typically in my age group. I'm 55 because they're like my dad. I can't. It's like I've got energy. I'm spry. I'm awake. I want to treat this body like the temple that it is. I'm about to go hit the gym. I'm lit. But no caffeine. No caffeine. When I get good sleep, my body can repair and become an, an, uh, an, uh, anabolic and release growth hormone and keep my adrenals happy and keep my body making testosterone, then I can get the gains at the gym at 55, full natty and ATTY. So it's really, really important that you guys learn about caffeine and the ill effects and what it can do to destroy your body rather than the lies, the foolery, the fluckery, and the garbageness of people trying to take the money out of your pocket to do, then do what? Make you crave it more. That's why it's become an amazing product because it keeps you wanting more. I want another cup. I want another cup. Stop. Connect to the nature. I went from Hollywood, California to Tennessee because I knew that I was losing my humanity. I knew it. And I'm not done. I'm not going to be around people my age telling me that they got this ache and this pain and they're tired. And this is what happens when you get older. Lies. Look at old tribes. Look at the aboriginals. Look at the Africans. Okay. Look at the Central Americans. Look at them. As they got older, they were amazing. When I went to Bali, there was an old 86-year-old lady walking up this huge mountain with a bucket on the back of her head. All the tourists were dying on a hot day, and she was just cranking it out. When you stop using your body, when you, that you, when you stop using it, everything just goes to shite. When you sit on your freaking butt, drinking coffee, sitting and working from home from your computer, you lose yourself. Watching the game on television. People are like, do you like watching sports? Hell fucking no. I like doing stuff. I don't sit on my ass and watch this nonsense. I get my freaking adrenaline naturally cranked up. And I want to go outside and ride my horse. Top speed. Let's go thunder. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's what I want to do. I want to go skate a freaking vert ramp. 
blast the front side. That's what I want to do. I want to sit on my ass and talk about how old I'm getting. How ridiculous. I can't. Come on, my people. Let's wake up. Stop being freaking massaged and scrubbed. Learn the truth. Do you know how many people I tell, like, you know, start focusing on your health instead of going the pharmacological, pharmacological way? You know, oh, do I take vitamin D supplements? Oh, do I take my thyroid medication? You know, it's just like, learn your body. Get off the SSRIs. It's so hard. It's like, <laughs> get off the birth control pills. Yes. Those, those are, oh, I need to do a video on those things. Those things destroy you. Women who are going through freaking menopause, menopause, stop running for the TRT and, and, and the HRTs, my people. The first thing I'd rather have you do is try to fix your adrenals before going towards any type of pharmace pharmaceutical route, pharmacological route. That's what we want to do. Don't run towards the easy thing because then you're going to be stuck on that crap forever and ever and ever. Woo! This one, the deep dive on coffee really just kind of cemented my understanding of being a human again, to be a kid again, to be excited about life, to have discovery and belief and throw away your fear. You guys are so afraid of charade around a bona. It's disgusting how many people ran towards the sword. Like, but my neighbor's uncle's mother, oh, but my mom, I wanted to make sure my mom was okay. I told my mom to go hug everybody. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? You know what happened with my mom being inside for two years, drinking her cup of joe? Total destruction of her health. Oh, two and a half years. Totally destruct, totally destructed. Just completely destroyed. Get off the coffee. Connect to nature. Stop being so afraid of your own dang shadow. Get motivated. Women get strong, right? Stop feeling like you got to go get plastic surgery to make yourself feel better. Always, and I mean always try to do things naturally at first. Everything has their place, right? Pharmaceutical medications might have their place for emergencies or serious problems like people who have to rely on insulin or um, people who are using supplementation like... Um, milk thistle to clear out their, their liver. But at the end of the day, we still have so many like things in our pockets and drawers that we could pull out that have use for us to be human. We don't have to go this plastic route because you're going to exactly get better to the, to the band-aid that you just put on that wound that you ain't ever gonna fix. Don't put band-aids on things, fix things and do the work. If I hear one more person say they don't like spinach, what are we dealing with children? If you were starving to death, that would be the best dang freaking not spinach, uh, liver that you would ever eat. I sit and I think about all the travels that I've done and I've watched people with absolutely nothing. I stayed in East Africa for two months in a small little tiny village where people make a dollar a day or less than and I'm listening to grown adults tell me that they don't want to eat something that they're so lucky to get. After eating liver for six months, my eyes already started correcting because I was so devoid of retinol. I wish people would wake up. I want to have fun again, like I did in the 70s. People don't have fun anymore. They don't talk anymore. They don't look at each other's other in the eye anymore. They're not using all of these God-given amazing freaking... Um, um, sensory to be able to live as a rear animals. We're supposed to be living outside. I'm so jealous that I'm so weak. I could sit, it's freezing outside. And I start to do this. What is it called? Anthropomorphize my horse and be like, Oh, they're cold. Stop Stephanie. I'm like checking his ears and checking his muzzle to see if he's cold. We're weak. I don't want to be weak anymore. I want to be strong. And that's the reason why I left Hollywood. Oh my God, so fabulous. We're going to do brunch. I got tired of that. And I wanted to be a human again. And that is the reason why I went to a small town in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee, because I wanted to feel a challenge. I wanted things to be difficult. 
I didn't want to have my like Whole Foods and Sprouts and Air One and Trader Joe's right down the street. I wanted to search for my grass fed, whatever. This all started with coffee. I'll do more rants later. Thank you, everyone. This was a deep dive. I hope this serves you well. Get off the coffee because it's aging you faster than your brain realizes it. Stop being in denial. Stop. Okay, stop eating so much protein. Stop being afraid of fat. You ain't going to get fat on fat. You get fat on the jacked up uh, hormones and your blood sugar and your insulin and your freaking estrogen. Okay, this is why. Wake up, people. Stop listening to people or gurus tell you that coffee's great and then you intermittent fast and do carnivore on top of that and you're wondering why you're all jacked up. And I'll see like doctors be like, oh, I love to start my day with a coffee. The research that I did on this was vast, far and wide. I wouldn't research the sleep expert, the endocrinologist expert who, were, who weren't even talking about just caffeine. They were just talking about what happens when you don't sleep, what happens with growth hormone, what happens with your reproductive system, what happens with pregnenolone steel, what happens with your GI system, what happens with fibromyalgia or thyroid problems or any type or lupus, which some is a growing problem with people. It is just really fascinating to really learn the truth and know what your body can handle. I don't care what this guru, but this guru did. And most people who are online are taking the TRTs, especially when they're over 45 and the freaking HRTs and the TRTs, because people are trying to take shortcuts and naive people are so desperate to improve their health. They, they don't even know the truth. Facts. Now I got to go. I got to go work out to keep my freaking hormones nice and balanced and have growth hormone and keep my adrenals happy and keep me young. When you use your body like these people do in these these uh, more uh, primitive cultures, which they're more primitive, more advanced than we are in so many ways. That's when you stay young, when you outside, and you get in that natural vitamin D and you get rid of the plastic food and you get rid of the coffee. Energy. You can find me on Instagram at Stephanie Ketogenic on my Facebook fan page. It's Stephanie, the business, the business person. What else? Uh, comment below. Tell me more what you guys want me to talk about. Don't forget to share this content. And um, what else? I think that's it. Hit the notification bell. Comment below. And you can join my course through stephanieperson.com. I will do a challenge soon and I'm going to make it like really educational. It's not going to be a weight loss challenge. It's so dirt. We're going to make this really, really cool where you feel like you guys actually got something powerful that you can use for the rest of your life. And it's not a bunch of lies and foolery. Peace.